Test, 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 test. Would you kind of scare? Wherever the direction of my life is to go back. Whoever has faith in me shall have life and will be God. And everybody who has life and has committed to me in faith shall not die for life. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. We're not so that I have told you that I go and prepare a place for you. And when I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you may be also. I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
Well, good morning. My name is uh, the Reverend Dan Graves. I'm from Trinity Anglican Church in Aurora, Jeff's Parish. And uh, it's my privilege to be with you today. I know that this is a, a very difficult occasion for all of you. And I know that uh, while there is much to celebrate in a wonderful life, there's also pain of grief and loss. And you're sitting with all of those feelings today. And no matter what you're sitting with, what you're feeling with, that's okay. That's perfectly fine because those feelings, they're actually your feelings and there's nothing wrong with them. So however you are finding yourself today, just sit with that and allow the words to wash over you, the words of remembrance to encourage you, perhaps to stir your heart to joy and allow the tears to come as well. One of the most important things we do when we gather together to give thanks for life, and as we're gathering to give thanks for Ian's life today, is to remember. And I'm so pleased that uh, members of the family have shared uh, words with us today. And we're going to begin with uh, words from Lisa that Andrew is going to read for us uh, in remembrance of Ian. So would you come forward, Andrew? Our Life Together by Lisa Kane. Ian, it's been over 28 years since Andrea and Shane first brought us together at the Elmira Maple Syrup Festival. From our wedding in September, 1995 to our 25th wedding anniversary last year during COVID, it has been quite a ride. In fact, it was a whirlwind at the start. We met in 1993 moved in together in 1994, married in 1995, bought a house and got a dog in 1996. I think that's when I moved in as well. <laughs> and had Owen in 1997. No wonder it took until 2001 for Ariel to come along. But I wasn't done yet. I badly wanted a third and when it didn't happen by my 40th birthday as hoped, we persevered and finally had Emma in 2004. As Deirdre told me, the third child is the spirited one, and boy, was she right. And I can certainly relate to that, too. <laughs> With our family complete, we embarked on a voyage, making wonderful memories together. From vacations in Orlando to visit our beloved Disney, to annual ski trips to Smuggler's Notch, Vermont, our family of five have enjoyed so many marvelous moments together. We made annual visits to the CNE and to the Elmira Maple Syrup Festival to visit Andrea and Shane. We watched the kids spring and fall soccer games many times with grandparents Jeff and Ann in tow. Enjoyed summers at the cottage, traveled to both coasts of Canada, visiting your brother Andrew, that's me by the way, uh, in Vancouver, along with my uncle, aunt and cousins in 2006, and accompanying Ann, Glenn and Paige to Nova Scotia in 2012, to England and Wales in 1997 to visit uncles Roger and Bob, in 2012 to attend Andrew and Anthony's wedding party, and in 2017 to visit uncle Andrew and Christine, cousins Rob, Don, Yolanda, Harvey, Marjorie, Michael, Ben, Martin and Janet, plus the extended Salisbury family and fr family friends, the Dawes. And I, I, I know they're all watching here today from the UK. The Bahamas with Ann and Jeff while I was seven months pregnant in 2004, Cozumel with the Backmans for Christmas in 2019, California where we visited Brian, Amber and their kids in 2018, Arizona with Andrea and Shane also in 2018, Boston and Cape Cod visiting John and Mark in 1993 and 2003 and attending their wedding in 2010. Georgia to visit my cousins, Kevin and Gareth and their families in 1999 and 2020. The Western Caribbean Disney Cruise with Anne, Jeff, Andrew and Anthony in 2014. 
New York City with Cousin Yolanda in 2018, and again with just the girls in 2019. Wow, definitely an adventure. We often played tourists in our own city, Toronto, visiting Kensington Market, the Distillery District, the beach, the Ossington Strip, the AGO, and Queen West West. We hosted friends at our home and went from weekend skiing at Mount St. Louis with the Bachmans to hanging out at hockey arenas, watching Emma's team play, again, often with the grandparents in tow. We thoroughly enjoyed the away tournaments we went to, getting to know the other parents, other players' parents in the January tournament in Huntsville was always a favorite, affording us the opportunity to stay at Deerhurst Resort. As a family, we ran the Sporting Life 10K a number of times, and you had run the Toronto Half Marathon with Ralph once, plus did so many triathlons with Paul Beaumont and at least one with Ralph too. You also participated in a 10K run with your Dales colleagues. We went to practically every big musical that came to Toronto, such as We Will Rock You, Kinky Boots, Mamma Mia, Rent, and Once. You love Les Mis the most, but you enjoyed them all. And even as a reluctant companion, you came with me to concerts like Foo Fighters, The Rolling Stones, July Talk, and Pink, to, to name just a few. Since Owen and Ariel have been away from home, we spent the past couple of winters skating most weekends with Emma, finding the college park rink to be our favorite, but trying out the Bentway, the Brickworks, and the Samuel Smith skating trail. In 2019, you and Ralph joined Scarborough Golf Club, where former Dale's pharmacy owner and good friend David belonged. The timing couldn't have been better as during spring 2020, COVID, we were able to go for long walks on the golf course and maintain social distancing. Of course, there were also sad moments we shared. In particular, the death of our moms only four months apart, yours, Anne, in December 2016, and mine, Mavis, in April 2017. But we soldiered on, and luckily we both still have our dads, Jeff and Doug, who coincidentally are only four months apart in age, turning 86 this year on August 18th and December 17th, respectively. And of course, our brothers, Andrew and Stephen, and their spouses, Anthony and Leanne. You were such a chatty guy who always learned so much about the people you spoke to. Talking to people was your special skill. You had a knack for making people feel comfortable enough to openly share their lives with you. You weren't afraid to recount personal stories like the three miscarriages we had before Emma was born to let others know they were not alone. You left Dale's Pharmacy at the end of 2020 of your own accord, feeling it was time and wanting to try something new. But I don't think you truly understood how much those 17 years at Dale's Church Street in Markham and all the years beforehand at Dale Scarborough, along with Dilip and Ramesh's Pharmacy and Lindsay, in total about 32 years were in the fabric of your being. You became a bit of a lost soul without your colleagues and customers. With 2020 as your best year ever, despite and maybe even because of COVID, getting to work and play golf in tandem plus having all the kids at home, 2021 was your worst year. <sighs> Trying to figure out where to go for pharmacy at age 56. And in a pandemic. <sighs> and unfortunately, 2021 is now all of our family's worst year, too. Losing you and knowing we will never see you again. And we will never have any more family adventures with you. And you won't give us words of wisdom from the latest self help audiobook you are listening to. 
that you won't be available for a bike ride or a long walk, that you won't ski Madonna Mountain again, or watch a sappy W Network movie with me, or any of the other myriad of things you would do with me and the kids. Yeah. Ian, we are so, so sad you are gone. We love you and we miss you terribly. Our hearts are broken. Lisa has asked me to share words written by their children, Owen, Ariel, and Emma, uh, and I will do so at this time. This is from Owen. Dad, when I think of you, I think of the things you loved, in particular golf, skiing, and beer. I can't go to the liquor store without thinking of you. Looking at the craft brewery aisle and seeing all the interesting beer labels. I'm not a fan of IPAs, but each one I saw will always find myself thinking, I wonder if dad would like this one since I knew, know IPAs were your favorite. Our shared love of skiing is something I'll remember forever. Ever since I first learned to ski, you were always willing to ski alongside me. All the way back to skiing at Uplands, the same place where you grew up skiing, to skiing every weekend at Mount St. Louis, and of course our annual trips to Smuggler's Notch. I find it all especially unfortunate that we weren't able to go this year, as no matter what the stress of everyday life might have been, you always enjoyed Smuggler's Notch. Those trips made for some of the best memories I'll ever have, and I can't imagine going without you. It's been years since we last golfed together, and I always imagined that I would pick it, up, pick it back up again. But with you there by my side. The guys at my work were recently talking about going golfing, and I was eager to get some dad lessons in ahead of that. I'll still think of you anytime I'm on the green. I can't help but think of how much you influenced my taste in music and considering how much or how important music is to me, that's a big deal. I still have memories of driving with you to get fresh bagels at What a Bagel. I don't remember how old I was at the time, but I specifically remember listening to the police. There are so many bands. Uh, like that, where I can't help but think of you anytime I hear them. Van Halen, Rush, Saga, Genesis, Supertramp. I think we had a little bit of a taste of some of those as we were coming in today. Um, before we had all had unlimited access to all the music in the world, your iTunes library was my primary source of music, and I wouldn't have had it any other way. I know you were proud of me. Looking back at your Facebook account, so many of your posts were promoting the jobs I've worked for and graphic design work I've done, videos of you posted of me singing with my guitar or my band gigs. I appreciate the supportive person you were and will always remember those positives about you. I know I wasn't around a lot the past few years, but any time spent together, I truly treasured. I'll always remember our last interaction with was you coming to visit where I'm living now, meeting Danielle and her kids, going antique shopping and grabbing lunch where the menu pages were so long we struggled to pick out what we wanted. I definitely inherited my indecisiveness from you. We talked about work and how crazy yet wonderful life has been. I'm happy I knew you could tell. And I knew you could tell. 
I'm glad I got to hug you before you headed home, not knowing it would be the last time. I'm so grateful that our last time together was a positive one. And as a family, I will always love you, Dad, Owen. From Ariel. Dad, there are so many amazing memories of you that I hold close to me, but for now, I'll just mention a few of my favorites. The first memory I can think of is you always seeing that first line from Just the Way You Are by Billy Joel. But instead of singing it normally, you would sing it in your best Shrek impersonation. <laughs> Don't go changing, you would sing. And eventually it just became your most iconic catchphrase and one that will stick with me forever. From a young age, you made me laugh, smile and feel safe, at all, uh, safe all the time. When I was little and scared to sleep on my own, you would lay next to me until I fell asleep. And sometimes even you would fall asleep and I'd wake up in the morning with you next to me. Eventually, I didn't need anyone there with me to fall asleep because you had created bedtime mixtapes for me to play with my CD player. These uh, consisted of multiple songs by the Spice Girls and Sugar Sugar <laughs> by the Archies. Family vacations were always so fun with you around as well. Although you would often get stressed out before leaving, you always had the best time anywhere you went we went, and it was because we were all together enjoying the company. In particular, you loved Vermont, and part of that love spawned from the fact that Vermont happens to be the home of two of your favorite people, Ben and Jerry. <laughs> I will always remember your Ben and Jerry scoop shop order, because although we often tried many different flavors in tight form, your go-to flavor would always be coconut seven layer bar. The last two memories I wanted to share are a bit more random, but nonetheless important to me. There have been multiple occasions where you would come home from work and still be sitting in the car and I could hear the music you were playing from the backyard. 99% of the time you were blasting me by Taylor Swift and singing along to it. I always thought it was so funny that you listened to that song so much, but hey, you were just a huge Taylor Swift fan and that's okay. Last but not least, we would always watch both Home Alone and Home Alone 2 every Christmas as a family. I will never forget how hard you would laugh every time we watched those movies. It was as if every time you watched one of them, that was the first time you'd ever seen it. Home Alone has always been one of my favorite movies, but it will forever hold ties to both you and Nanny. Dad, I miss you so much already, and I'm so deeply upset by the fact that I will never again hear you say, don't go changing again. Fall asleep next to you. Eat Ben and Jerry's with you. Listen to Taylor Swift with you or watch Home Alone with you. I love you so very much, Dad, and that could never change. Love, Ariel. from Emma. Dad, while you may be physically gone during your time here, you made a mark on me that will last a lifetime. We made countless incredible memories that will always remind me of you. One of the first things I think about when I think of you is how supporting, supportive and caring you always were. You came to practically every single one of my hockey games and practices so you could be there to help me tie my skates and cheer me on. You always tried to help me with schoolwork, even if I didn't even under, even if you didn't even understand it yourself. I can remember several nights where you stayed up late with me trying to understand my math work. Even just a few weeks ago, when I was struggling with my final essay from my summer course, you attempted to read my entire book in one night so you would be able to help me finish on time. I will always remember how you would ski with me all day, every day on our yearly trips to Smuggler's Notch. When Owen and Ariel went off with their friends 
You always stayed and skied every single run with me. You could have gone off by yourself and skied the super hard runs, but you always stayed with me so I wouldn't be alone. Being the youngest child also meant that I got to stay home and spend more time with you. I will never forget our almost daily long walks and bike rides. We walked anywhere from six to 12 kilometers during the worst parts of the pandemic, which I think kept you and me both sane when life got super isolating. Well, for most people, our walks may seem super long when walking with you and talking the entire time, it went by in no time. I will also remember our long bike rides down to the waterfront as well as through the park. Just last summer, almost every night we would bike to the park, skip rope for about an hour, and then we would bike home up the steep Sherwood Park Hill. It was extremely challenging, but having you there cheering me on made it so much easier. One final thing I will mention that will always remind, you, remind me of you is Disney. Whether it was the movies, the parks, or the cruises, you loved it. And that was something we always bonded over. Just a couple of months ago, you were telling me how much you wanted to go on another cruise and to Disney World. And we talked about hopefully going there sometime soon and running the marathon. Unfortunately, we never got to go and we haven't been in almost seven years, but I know that whenever I go, do get to the, go next, you will be there with me. I can also remember you joking, or maybe not, about going and working on a Disney cruise one day. While we were in Mexico in December of 2019, we would wake up early, sit on the balcony together, and wait for the Disney cruises to arrive, which they did almost every single day we were there. Well, for many people, it may be hard to understand why Disney is so special to me and why I constantly beg you to go. I know you always understood why and that you felt the same. You had so much more life to live, so many more places to visit, things to do and people to meet. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to get through these next parts of my life without you, but what I do know is that I will always make you proud and do many of the things I know you had always wished you could do. It's hard to believe you won't be there to see me graduate high school, go to university, walk me down the aisle one day and meet your grandkids. But I know you will be there in spirit to guide me through. Thank you for these past 16 years and for being the absolute best dad a girl could ever ask for. I love you forever. Love, Emma. takes a lot of courage to share those words and write them down. And I'm so grateful to each of you for doing that. Um, so beautifully written and so deeply moving. This time I'd like to invite a very good friend of the family, David Gannicott, to share a few words and memories. Yes, indeed. My name is David Gannicott. I get rid of this mask because I hate them. <laughs> I'm accompanied by my wife, Joy. Um, convention would say, I would, I would say to you all, a very good morning. I will forego that because it's not a particularly good morning. Uh, the, the Gannicott family and the Walker family have known each other for many, many years. Uh, we, the Walkers and the Gannicots, Joy and I and Jeff and Ann, left England unbeknownst to each other at about the same time, uh, probably 30 years ago, maybe 35 years ago. I'm, I'm poor with dates. They left England, we left England. Uh, Jeff and Ann came out with two kids. Joy and I came out, so foot loose and fancy free. Uh, without going into any more detail, uh, we we raised a family, Jeff and Ann raised their families, and uh, we got to know each other. Uh, we, we, in fact, we met at a park here in, in the Toronto area 25, 30 years ago, 
And our kids were about the same age as the Walker kids. And we all kind of got together and, and, and made a very good friendship. Uh, I think then he, he, um, he probably was about seven years old and his brother Nigel was just a couple of years older. Uh, we had two girls and the Walkers, of course, with their two boys. Uh, later, each of us added another kid. So we ended up with three each. Uh, Ian was a very bright, sensitive fella. Uh, he and his brother and I, Joe, were, were very good buddies. And it was a dreadful blow um, when, for Ian when Nigel was killed in a, in a road accident that, that was many years ago. I'm sure, most, if not all of you are aware of that. Then more recently, another tremendous blow was when mother Anne died. Uh, Ian was very close to his mother and I think that affected him tremendously. I've never discussed this with anyone, but I do believe that affected him tremendously. Ian then went on to become a pharmacist. Uh, he married Lisa and they in fact had their three children. Ian's empathy with others was apparent in his work. Uh, he saw people as human beings and not just customers. And it's a very strange thing. My eldest daughter, uh, whose name is, is Jane, uh, it was, is a nurse, was a nurse, is a nurse. And she was in the hospital that Ian was involved in. And they, of course, knew each other from, from growing up as kids. And Jane was always very impressed with the way Ian handled himself in the hospital as a pharmacist. And it also so happens that um, an accountant of mine has a family with health problems that so happened were in that same hospital in Markham. And the fellow's name is, is Latif, and Latif many times over the years, long before all these problems occurred, um, said, you know, the pharmacist there is a guy, and I said, yeah, I know him. And he said, a wonderful fellow, great help, helped me tremendously, helped my family, etc." So Ian uh, was an extraordinary blessing, I think, to all who kind of crossed his path much more than he would ever have realized. Of course, I have no idea the problems that Ian faced that caused us all to be here today. Uh, and I, I don't even want to touch on that. And I think that in concluding, I simply would say, may his soul rest in peace. And also the same, I know, I'm sure he's probably with his brother, Nigel, and his mother Anne. Thank you. Let us pray. God of all consolation, in your unending love and mercy, you turn the darkness of death into the dawn of new light. Show compassion to your people in their sorrow, be their refuge and their strength to lift them from the darkness of grief the peace and light of your presence. Your son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by dying for us, conquered death, and by rising, restored life, may we then go forward eagerly to meet him, and after our time on earth, be reunited with all our brothers and sisters, where every tear will be wiped away, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I'd like to invite um, Ian's very good friend, Paul, forward to read the lesson from Romans. This is a scripture reading from uh, Romans uh, 12, 9 to 21, the New Revised Standard Version written by the Apostle Paul. Let love be genuine, hate what is evil, 
hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. These are the words of the Lord. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, it is indeed with very heavy hearts that we're here, but there's a prayer that I'll use shortly that says that we should not sorrow as a people without hope. Now, it doesn't say that we shouldn't sorrow. It simply says we should not sorrow as people without hope. And so it is entirely okay to grieve but we should not let our grieving take us to a place from which we can't come back. And you're all gathered here today to give thanks for the life of a wonderful man, a man who cared about others, who loved his family, who served others, who enjoyed life, who worked hard for his family, who loved spending time with his family and loved being with people. And so even though I think we just got in with the maximum that we could have today, uh, I know that if we could have opened the doors further in COVID time, there would have been many more whose lives Ian has intersected with. And as we have that opportunity to gather in September for another celebration, uh, I know that there will be many more opportunities for people to speak about the incredible impact that Ian made on their lives, to share those stories and to celebrate him. And so there's, there's a lot of joy in that. There's a lot of joy in looking at a wonderful life. And I know those words that each of you offered, they were so heartfelt and difficult. And I, I really feel and sense the pain that you're going through. And yet I sense so much joy as well in the life an experience you had with your dad, with your husband. Um, and no one can ever take that away from you. Even though he is now no longer with you in the way he was, the time that he was here was a profound gift. And you should absolutely grieve that it's over. But hold fast, as the apostle said, to what is good. Hold fast to what has been good. And don't lose hope. Yes, we need to, as St. Paul says, persevere in our, in our grieving, in our suffering. This is part of being human, to experience loss and to grieve our way through it. And it's especially poignant because I know that this particular death brings up so many others. I know that Nigel is with us today, and Anne. And I know Lisa, your mother. I know that there are other deaths that are in the room, that are present, that we never get over. The pain 
is still there and will always be there. Grief doesn't know the timeline. It goes with us. And yet joy doesn't know the timeline either. Because isn't it interesting, as we shared those words today, there were also moments of laughter that bubbled up through. Did you notice at the mention of beer? <laughs> um, there was laughter. And so we have these tears that are falling and we have this laughter that is coming out of our breasts as well. Uh, it's, it's a confusing world, but yet we are here together. We're here together supporting each other. And one thing I often think about with respect to the love of God is how do we know what God's love feels like? We know because we can experience the love and touch of another. That's precisely why God becomes human in Jesus. So we could experience God's love, God's touch, God's life-giving peace. And so as, as we gather together today, I know you're not supposed to hug. I know this is, but some of you will still do that, I'm sure. Um, but, you know, we, we gather together, and at least we have a virtual hug, and we hold each other. And as we do that, the Lord is present, comforting in us. When we feel the arms of another embrace us, we can be sure that God embraces us. Even in the 23rd Psalm, it says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. So even here in this place, in the midst of our grief and mourning, thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. So my prayer for you in the days ahead is yes to sorrow, but not as a people without hope, but in loving remembrance of those we love who have gone before us, who now worship on another shore. And I will also pray that nothing good in Ian's life will be lost, but will be of benefit to the world that everything in which he was great will continue to mean much to us who follow, and that we may grow closer together, even because of his death. Amen. Let us pray. God of grace and glory, we give thanks to you for Ian, who was so near and dear to all gathered today and has now been taken from them. We thank you for the friendship he gave and for the strength and peace he brought. We thank you for the love he offered and received while he was with us on this earth. And we pray that nothing good in this man's life will be lost, but will be a benefit to the world. That all that was important to him will be respected by those who follow and everything in which he was great will continue to mean much to us now that he is dead. We ask that he may go on living in his family, in his friends, in his children, in their hearts, in their minds, in their courage, and in their consciences. And we ask that those who are close to him may now, because of his death, be even closer to each other. And we ask that we may here, in peace, in friendship on earth, always be deeply conscious of your promise to be faithful to us, even unto death. And we pray that all who are tested by this death may not minimize this loss or seek refuge from it in words alone, and also that they do not brood over it so that it overwhelms them and isolates them from others. May God grant us courage and confidence in Christ and strength to meet the days ahead. In the name of the risen Lord. Amen. And we pray, O oh Lord, for all who are bereaved, that you give them the spirit of faith and courage, that they may have strength to meet the days to come with steadfastness and with patience, not sorrowing as those without hope, but in thankful remembrance of your great goodness and in joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. As our Savior has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Would you stand as you are able for the prayer of commendation? Give rest, O Christ, to your servant with your saints where sorrow and pain are no more. 
neither sighing, but life everlasting. You only are immortal, the creator and maker of all, and we are mortal formed of the earth, and to earth shall we return. For so did you ordain when you created me, saying, you are dust, and to dust ye shall return. All of us go down to the dust, and yet even at the grave we make our song, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Give rest, O Christ, your servant with your saints, where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing, but life everlasting. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Ian. Acknowledge, we pray, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Rest eternal grant unto him, O Lord, and that light perpetual shine upon him. May his soul and all the souls of the departed through the mercy of God rest in peace and rise with Christ in glory. My friends, may the peace of God which passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the service here in the chapel today. I'd like to take the opportunity to thank Father Graves and everyone who shared words uh, of remembrances. Um, and also thank you to those online who weren't able to be here with us because of the circumstances. Um, we're now going to proceed, for those of us who are here, to the St. John's Jefferson Cemetery for the internment prayers. Uh, and uh, if you're going to follow, we're going to just head straight up Young Street, and the location of the cemetery is just uh, at the north end. Uh, we'll leave the driveway. If you do get stopped at a red light, please obey the traffic signal uh, and use your four-way flashers. It'll make other traffic aware that you're traveling with us. Um, so then at this time, um, Father Graves will lead us out and we'll carry the urn out and exit traditionally. Thank you. Thank you. 